Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're taking a look at an attractive and small card game called Codex Naturalis, and it comes in a tin. In this game, each player is going to have a small hand of cards, and you are going to be playing those cards in front of you in this sort of grid pattern in front of you to collect specific symbols play other cards that require those symbols, score victory points, try to come out ahead. It's very simple. You play a card, draw a card. And then you'll you'll get points throughout the game and then a few at the end of the game. Cards are tiny little cards and they are very flashy, covered in gold inks and just very stylish game. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at how the game works, give you an overview and then we'll come back and I'll tell you on the other side what I think of it, who I think it might be good for, what occasions, all that good stuff. Here we're taking a look at a game for two players already in progress, a few rounds in, and I'm going to go ahead and explain uh, the general flow of the game, what we are trying to do. So the game is going to be over when somebody hits 20 points right here. We're going to finish up that round, have another one, and then the game is over. And then whoever has the most points is going to be the winner, besides the ones you've already scored on the track. You are going to score victory points for these two public objectives. So for every two scrolls visible, you're going to get two points. This player has one there, so they're not quite there. Uh, and then for this pattern, if you've built that pattern with those colors in that shape, you're going to get three points every time you do that, okay? So there is that one. Yes, these cards are quite shiny. And then everybody has a secret objective. For example, this player is going to get two points for every three of the mushroom symbols showing. They've got three of them right now, so clearly working towards that. And then this player has a secret one as well. So, uh, on your turn, you are going to play a card from your hand. You have three cards in your hand. and They come from two decks. And then once you play one, you are going to take a new one. You can take any of the face-up ones, these two from here, or these two from here, or just the top one from the deck itself. The back of the deck does give you a hint as to what is on the front, uh, so you can use that information, of course. So that player is going to play a card. Now, they come in two kinds, two varieties here, because the top ones are the non-shinier ones, anyway. They have no prerequisite and sometimes they'll give you a victory point, like this player played a couple of cards that gave them a victory point. You'll see it there at the very center of the top. But that's because they have very few symbols. They're not adding a lot to their display, right? But the ones at, the, at this pile, these, they have a prerequisite at the bottom, and then they score based on something. So for example, we'll take a look at this one here. It lets us know the prerequisite is two purple butterflies and one blue fox, okay? So this player is going to play this card, and they're allowed to play it because those symbols are visible. Butterfly, butterfly, fox. This card in the middle here is a starter card, and it's double-sided. They, they chose to play it like this, okay? So I can play this, and now when you play a card, you can do it at any corner that is available. So I could do this, for example, I could do that, I could do that one, anything you cover, of course, is gone. Uh, so let's say, for the sake of the example, I'm going to do it there. Okay? I'll do it like that. The requirement is met, and then I'm going to get one victory point for every scroll I've got. There are two right there, so that player, the blue player, is going to get two. Once that's done, they will take a new card. So, again, looking at everything going on, all right, I got this, I got scrolls here, this is going to score for the mushrooms. I've got uh, this other card here, which will be two butterflies. Uh, the requirement will be two butterflies and a uh, red uh, mushroom. And that's going to give me one point per vial. Okay, well, having more vials might be a good idea, so they're going to take that card and put that in their hand. And that's it. That's their turn. We flip over a new one, and it's the other player's turn. So, over here, I was going for this secret objective, which, again, seen from my point of view, looks like this. So, I've got a red card there, a blue one here, and if I can put a blue one down here, then I'm going to score three points for that. If I can do it multiple times, I'll score multiple times. That's hidden, of course. Uh, and so, I could play one of these. This one here, which requires the three blue foxes, haven't met yet. I have one there, one there. So not quite, not quite able to do that. 
This gets me a point if I play, but doesn't really give me too many symbols. And then this one has the vial, which might come in handy later on, but it also gives me that fox. So my plan right now might be, for example, to play, oh, let's say, um, I might play it here, uh, like that, maybe here. Maybe I'll play it there like that, and uh, nothing else happens, and I take a new one, okay? And then next turn, I'm going to be working towards playing this card for the three foxes. I also ideally want to put it here, though, to make that pattern. So these are the things you're, th you're thinking about. These corners that are empty cannot hold a card on top of them. So, for example, if we take a look at this display here, there's nothing I can put on top of this corner. This, cor this is not a legal play. The corner has to be available. An empty corner can go on that one, so a dead corner like that. But I can't play on top of that one. And then I, again, take one, put it in my hand, flip over a new one. That's basically it. Like I said, make it to 20 and then score your final victory points from the bonuses and see who the winner is. That's pretty much it. You are trying to have symbols available to you so that you can score bigger and better things and achieve uh, different objectives. One final thing I want to mention is any of these cards you can play on the back of the card. So for example, if this card here doesn't work out for me, or I desperately need another one of that symbol there, or I'm worried about locking myself in with too many of the dead corners, I could play this like so, and because that symbol's in the middle of the card, it will not ever get covered up. So you're allowed to do that as well. That's gonna be it. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. That is Codex Naturalis. We're going to talk about this. I'm going to start with a couple of things I thought were less than strong, and then we'll end with this bunch of things I really did like. Overall, this is a really neat little game. This is what the whole thing looks like, by the way, a little tin box there. And at the top, we're going to start with theme. I read through the rule book and realized, man, they don't even give you that little blurb they usually do about theme. Like, they're not really even trying. It's actually on the back of the box. And it says, Assemble the pages of the Codex Naturalis, a secret manuscript which lists the species of the four kingdoms that live in the primary forests. Right, 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 the four primary forests! How could I forget? Uh, so the theme here is, you know, not getting a thumbs down, actually, because... It's super easy to ignore. It's not one of those obtuse themes that then the, the, the word usage and the iconography and the whatever gets in the way. Here you can easily ignore it. It's attractive. It's welcoming. None of it is off-putting but for being too uh, esoteric or too geeky. It's like, hey, look, a cute butterfly and a mushroom and a whatever. So it's fine. But it's not good. It's not a good theme. And then the other thing would be, for me, the tactics and the luck and the strategy, I think, are good. They're just not great, okay? There is, um, there aren't quite enough moving parts, and you don't see enough stuff as far as enough cards to really feel like, man, I am making some, some serious choices here. You'll make choices, certainly. And you will react to what's going on. Uh, you will adapt your strategy to what's available out there. You can't hold out too long because the game's not that long, right? So if you're hoping to make a specific pattern or collect a bunch of vials, when you're, it's your turn, if they're there, you will draft them. If they're not there, you might take the top card of the deck and hope it's there or just choose a different thing. But I wouldn't say the, the strategy is tremendous. The game also has a little bit of luck, of course, because uh, the pool of cards from which you are picking is fairly small. You have a hand of three cards. All of these things, though, I think ultimately help keep down the analysis paralysis that might show up if the players had too many choices. And there is very little of that in this game, which is great. So let's double back up and talk about the things I really did like. The aesthetics, I think, are very beautiful in this game. I'm not normally a fan of tins, but I like them at this size box. It's okay. I got no issue with this box. It's a nice box. It's attractive. It's shiny. It's kind of representative of what comes in the box, which works for me. 
the symbols, the colors, the vibrancy of everything in this box. The cards are gorgeous. They are covered in gold. And yet, the game does not feel ostentatious. This game feels approachable. It feels... Um, lovely and, and gentle and simple and uh, in many ways very easy to get into and enjoy and I like that about it very much. The cards are pretty good quality. They are not tremendous but they're pretty good. And then the rest of the components you got you know your little folding board here which is double-sided. I don't think there's a reason but hey why not? Little board and the tokens. That's it. That's all you need and all of that comes together very nicely. The replay value is good. You got different goals from game to game. The in-game ones, uh, I mean the, the common ones, plus the one you are hiding. So there are there are different, you know, dynamics there as to, you know, if you directly compete with the other people or you work more towards the one you can accomplish. There's also the points you are gathering while playing versus the points that you score at end game. And which ones you focus on. Now, this game is, in many ways, uh, in many ways, it's a, it's a racing game, right? It's a game in which the end game trigger is based on a certain number of points. And then there are a few more points you get at the end. So, do you barrel down the track, try to get those 20 points? Uh, you know, you saw in the overview there, one player a few points ahead because, you know, I, they were playing the single point cards. Not as many symbols, but you're, you can sort of peck the other players to death, maybe, at a single point apiece. Pick up a few goals along the way. So do you do that? Or do you target those, you know, end game goals? The two public ones, the one you're hiding. How do you want to run the race? So that's part of it. And that, that adds to the replay value. Game arc. Very fast. Very, um... It's very easy to get into the game, to pick a thing you want to go for and start chipping away at it. And again, because it is, in many ways, a racing game, it just, that helps the feeling of this being a punchy, engaging, filler game. The only thing working against it from that point of view is the fact that you kind of need some room in front of you. Because otherwise, if you did not need, you know, kind of every player needs some, some space in front of them for those grids, this would be a slam dunk restaurant, purse, uh, traveling kind of game, you know? This would be the kind of game you can bring out anywhere, pop it out of the tin there, play a hand, be done with it. It's not quite that kind of game. But it's a fantastic filler, and it does a good job with um, just be being accessible, you know, in many ways. All right, speaking of that, ease of play. It's very easy, lots of game in a little box, uh, very enjoyable, easy to get into. And that's basically it. I The game, again, when I said it's not ostentatious, it also doesn't... It, um, what's in the... What you see is what you get in many ways. The game is not... Um, there isn't necessarily a ton of hidden depth, which is why I got a little bit of a ding from me when it came to the strategy and the tactics. But that does not rob this package of any of its fun. And I do enjoy it. I do think it's fun. Is it a game for everyone? Well, no, I don't think so. If you're not someone who necessarily enjoys kind of set collecting, you know, that's really what you're doing, collecting the symbols in this pattern and then playing, playing the cards at... You need a group four, and then you score points from that. If you don't like that kind of game, you probably won't like it. If you are not a puzzly person, and you don't enjoy too many puzzles in your games, you might not like it. There's also not a lot of interaction in the game. You're drafting, so you might take a card I need, but that's basically it. Uh, but I enjoy it. I think it's a, it's a fun little game. The box has 25 minutes, and that's about right. And there, uh, for me, I think this is a good game... To bring to the table with folks that are, that perhaps can't settle on the same theme. Like some people want to play a game about goblins, but everybody else thinks that goblins are not fun and they're kind of geeky. So they want to play a game about, uh, I don't know, real life farming. And the other people are like, oh, that theme sounds kind of lame. This one, that theme is so simple and straightforward. It'll fade away. No one has any objections to it. So 
I think that's actually one of its strengths in many ways. But um, overall, the simplicity, the engagement, the enjoyment, I think is ultimately its biggest strength. And it's very pretty to boot. So I liked it. Um, I feel like you think I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10 or something. Since I've been kind of talking it up. I'm just trying to, um, I think, get across the point that this little game, for how small it is and unassuming... How fun it is. It's actually going to get an 8 out of 10 from me, which is a seal of approval. I would certainly recommend it, unless you have a ton of fillers, I guess, and don't need another one. But, um, yeah, I like it. I think it's it's very nice. It's lovely. It's a lovely game, and that's a, a, a good word to describe this one. I recommend you give it a try. If you want to pick it up or you want to try someone's copy, I think you'll walk away from this one with a smile at the very least. So, there you go. That is Codex. Naturalis, very cute game, 8 out of 10. My name is Z Garcia, folks. I'm going to see you on the next one.